Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Converting Units of Length. It's applicable to any uh, problem in physics, in chemistry, anytime you need to convert units of length, this is the way I want you to do it. And it's very important because the way in which we're going to convert our units is called using the idea of dimensional analysis. It's a big fancy word that basically means doing it the proper way to get the units that you want out of the problem uh, and converting units in the proper way. And I will tell you that dimensional analysis, doing it the way we're going to do here in the board, is one of the absolute most useful things that I have personally ever learned in my life. I use it in all throughout physics all the way to the end, chemistry, engineering, advanced graduate school. You're going to use unit conversions in the way that I'm going to teach you here forever. So we're going to learn here units of length. In the next lesson, we'll be doing area and volume, which build upon this. It's not hard. Let's just dive into the first problem. A car travels 300.0 kilometers for a family vacation. Convert this distance into A, miles, and B, millimeters. So my advice to you is after you read a problem that requires a unit conversion, the first thing you should do is write down what is given to you in the problem statement. So first we're given 300.0 kilometers. So that is the very first thing that we write down. So we say 300. 0 0.0 in kilometers. Now we know we're going to be converting units here, so what I want you to do is draw a large underline here and I want you to draw a vertical bar right here. What we have to do is figure out conversion factors to go from the unit we're starting from, kilometers, and ending up in the unit we want. Now part A of this is we want to convert to miles, so let's focus on miles. Now I'm not going to write down every unit conversion under the sun for you. Uh, but when you look in any physics book or chemistry book or even math book, you can usually find a table of conversion factors. In this case, we want to go from kilometers to miles. So look up a unit conversion to go uh, from kilometers to miles. You usually find it in the very front of whatever textbook you're using. So for us, we are going to use the fact that one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. Now I want you to notice right away how weird of a conversion factor this is. 1.609, that's just a weird number. The reason it's a weird number is because you're going from the, the, the British system, basically, uh, miles and feet and inches and things like that, into the metric system. But once you're working inside of the metric system, all of the unit conversions are powers of 10, so they're very easy. But when you go from you know, British to English or vice versa, you have these decimals, these weird unit conversions to deal with. We know this is true. We looked this up in a textbook or, or on the web or whatever. And what we have to do is use this to get where we're trying to go. Now what you're going to do is you're going to write this up on your conversion uh, table here in such a way to cancel the kilometers because the unit we want out is miles. So the way you do it is you write it as one mile goes up on the top and that's equal to whatever you write on the bottom, 1.609 kilometers. Now why did I write it this way? Because what we're going to do is treat this thing as a kind of a fraction multiplication. Anything on the top, in this case kilometers, cancels with anything on the bottom, any units that you see. And what you're going to do is you're going to take any numbers and multiply the ones on the top and then you're going to divide by the numbers on the bottom. So you take 300 times 1, which doesn't change anything, and then divide by 1.609. Now the only unit you have left is miles, and that is what we're trying to convert to, miles. So all you have to do is set your unit conversions or your conversion factors up in such a way to cancel the units you don't want and you only have the units left over that you do want, in this case, miles. If we were to write this upside down to put kilometers on the top and miles on the bottom, no units would cancel, and so we know it's wrong. So what we're going to do to get the answer here is we're going to take 300.0, multiply by 1, and we're going to divide by 1.609, and what we end up with is a number, 186.5, and the only unit left we have since these canceled are miles. And so it's 186.5 miles. Now what this does is it eliminates the mental gymnastics that you have to often do with converting units. A lot of times you're like, well, should I multiply or should I divide to get the unit I want? And you start thinking about which one's the bigger unit, which one's the smaller unit. And it gets kind of confusing when you have picometers and nanometers and gigameters because those are units that you're not that familiar with. And so it's kind of hard for you to know, should I divide, should I multiply? Don't think about it. Please, don't think about it. It's not something you have to think about. All you have to do is arrange the conversion factor in a way to cancel. Top and bottom is the only way things cancel. What you don't want and all you have is what you have left. And then you know you multiply and then divide and then you get your answer. If you flip it over the other way with kilometers on the top, you get kilometers squared because you're multiplying. 
and you have miles on the bottom. That's not what you want. All right, let's go in and do the second part of this. The second part of this is we want to convert it into millimeters. So 300.0 kilometers, and let's do our conversion factor. Now, do you know a, uh, a unit conversion that goes directly from kilometers to millimeters? I actually don't know of it right now. I could probably think about it and come up with it. Obviously, it's easier if you have a one-step conversion process, but most of the time, you have to do a multi-step conversion process because we only know a handful of unit conversions in my mind. For instance, I know a thousand meters equals one kilometer. Uh, uh, I know a thousand meters is one kilometer. I know uh, uh, several easy ones like that, but I don't know how many nanometers are in a picometer, or I don't know how many you know, uh, centimeters are in a gigameter. I, I just don't remember those. I could think about it and figure it out, but I don't remember them. So stop trying to remember them. Just use the ones you know. That's what I'm trying to say. And what we want to do is inch our way there. I don't know how to go directly into, uh, what am I trying to convert to? To millimeters. I don't know how to do that, but I know that one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Now, why did I write it this way? Why didn't I flip it over? Because when I write it this way, this is the only way kilometers cancel because it has to be on top and bottom. By the way, why do the units cancel on the top and bottom? Because what you're doing is you're multiplying on the top and then dividing. Remember, anytime you divide anything, when you have the same thing on the top and the bottom, it cancels. For instance, what's two, the fraction two over two, two divided by two, it's just one, right? What is six divided by six or six over six? It's one. What is a thousand over a thousand? It's one. What is a million over a million? It's one. Because when you have something on the top divided by something on the bottom, it's one. So when you have this, even though they're catty corner, you're still multiplying and then dividing. So you're essentially dividing these two units and it's not so much that they cancel, it's just that they divide away and reveal one. One is left over. So that's why they cancel, because when they divide, they go to the number one, and the number one, when you multiply by one, it doesn't, it doesn't enter into the answer, so it's kind of gone. So they cancel because they divide away like this. Now, if we stop the calculation here, multiply and then divide, we'll have meters left. But we don't want meters. We want millimeters. So you start thinking about the units in the metric system. And uh, maybe you have to look in a book. That's fine, too, if you have to. But what I know is that one of these meters is exactly equal to 1,000 of these little bitty millimeters because I know that 1,000 of these little millimeters are in that big meter. Why did I do it that way instead of flipping it over? Because doing it this way means meters cancel. If I put it upside down, I would not have a cancellation in the meters. So I don't have to think about should I multiply or divide. I just arrange the conversion factors to cancel what I don't want. The only unit left is millimeters, so I know that I'm going to get the right answer. So all you do is you say 300 times 1,000, of course, divide by 1, times another 1,000, divide by 1. The dividing by 1 doesn't do anything, so you're just taking this times this times this, and you get an answer of 3.000 times 10 to the 8. And what unit do you have left? Millimeters. I'll just put millimeters right down here, and this is the final answer. 3 times 10 to the 8 millimeters. So I didn't know a direct conversion from kilometers to millimeters, but I know that I can go from kilometers to meters and then from meters to millimeters because I have those memorized or I can easily look them up in books. And so that is what I do. All right, so that's problem one, part A and part B. Problem number two, convert 20.00 miles into kilometers using only the following conversion factors. So I'm gonna tell you what you're allowed to use. One mile is 5,280 feet. One feet is 12 inches, one inch is 2.54 centimeters, one meter is 100 centimeters, and one kilometer is 1,000 meters. So I'll just write those down, and that'll be kind of like what you're legally allowed to use for this problem, right? One mile uh, is equal to 5,280 feet. You're allowed to use that. You're allowed to use that one foot is 12 inches. You probably have that memorized. Uh, you're allowed to use that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. You're allowed to use that one meter is 100 of these uh, centimeters. And then one kilometer is 1,000 meters. Let me just double check. I have the, the feet to miles, the feet to inches. I have the centimeters to the inches, the one meters to the centimeters, and the one kilometers to the meters. So the next thing you do is you write down what you're given, 20 miles, 20.00 miles to be exact. So that's what we are given. And we want to convert this to kilometers. So we're going to go and draw this long thing here, kilometers. Now, 
do I have a direct path here from miles to kilometers? In the previous problem, I already told you that one mile is 1.609 kilometers. So of course, I could put one mile, 1.609 kilometers on the top, and I could do it in one step. Bam, you're done. And if you know that, great. But that's not the point of this problem. The point of the problem is I want you to not use the easy single step conversion. I want you to force you to do a multi-step conversion. So how can you get to kilometers using only these conversion factors here? All right. Well, the only thing I have for miles is to get me to feet. And once I get to feet, I know I can go to inches. And once I get to inches, I know I can get to centimeters. And once I get to centimeters, I know I can get to meters. And once I get to meters, I know I can get to kilometers. So I have a path through these that I'm going to use. The first one is that one mile is 5,280 feet. Why do I arrange it like that? Why don't I just flip it upside down and do it the other way? Because this is the only way miles cancels. And if I stop the calculation here, I'm going to have feet for my answer, but I don't want that. So I keep going. I see that one feet is 12, one foot is 12 inches. One foot is 12 inches. Why did I write it like this? Why didn't I flip it upside down? Because this is the only way where the feet cancels with the feet. And now if I stop the calculation here, I have inches, but I don't want inches. I want uh, uh, kilometers, right? So I'm going to continue on inches to centimeters. I'm going to write this as one inch is 2.54 centimeters. But why did I write it like that? Why didn't I just flip the thing upside down? Because this is the only way that inches cancel. And if I stop the calculation here, I'll have centimeters left over. All right. But I don't want centimeters. So let's continue on. I can go from centimeters to meters. I can write it as 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. Why did I write it like that? Why didn't I just flip this thing upside down? Because this is the only way centimeters cancels. And if I stop the calculation here, I'm going to have meters as my answer, but I don't want that. So I'm going to continue going one kilometer, 1000 meters, but I have to write the 1000 meters on the bottom and the one kilometer on the top. Why did I write it like that instead of just flipping it over? Because here the meters cancel and that I only have kilometers left over. So that is what I'm going to do. So if you take 20.00, multiply by 5,280, multiply by 12, multiply by 2.54. I'm ignoring the ones because they don't, they don't do anything when you divide by the ones here. Same thing with these ones. I'm multiplying by one, but that doesn't do anything. So you multiply all these, then divide by 100, then divide by 100. So just in your calculator, do this times this times this times this. Take that answer, divide by 100, divide by 1,000. And what you're going to get is 32.19. And the only unit left after all this is kilometers. Now I hope, you know, we're going to get and do a lot more unit conversions uh, uh, throughout this, these lessons. But this process here should convince you right away how powerful this is. Because obviously we went from miles to kilometers and I already know how many mile, how miles and kilometers are related. So I already know I can do this in one step. But by forcing you to use these, I'm literally telling you that any conversion factors you have at your disposal, you can get to the answer that you need to get to. And we're going to be using some weird units later on weird units of electric fields and magnetic fields and weird temperature units and all kinds of things that you don't have everyday experience with. But if you know the conversion factors, you can often get to the answer without worrying about, should I multiply, should I divide? Because look at how many decisions I would have had to make. I would have driven myself crazy, but I didn't have to think about anything. All I had to do was think about how do I arrange it to cancel to get me where I'm trying to go. 32.19 kilometers. All right, let's do our very last problem. It says use the approximate conversion factors. Now these are approximate, these are not exact. So one centimeter is approximately one half inch. 10 centimeters is approximately four inches. One meter is approximately one yard. One uh, meter is approximately three feet. And one kilometer is approximately 0 0.6 miles. And we're gonna convert to, uh, to uh, SI system of, of length. We're gonna convert 20 feet and 60 miles and 80 inches. And it just says convert to SI system. So let's just convert them all to meters. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down our conversion factors. One centimeter is not exactly, but approximately one half of an inch, right? It's, it's not exactly right, but that's pretty close, right? 10 centimeters is not exact, but approximately four inches. Of course, there's going to be decimals in the real ones, right? Uh, one meter is approximately one yard. You, you, know, you know that a yard and a meter are not exactly the same, but they're pretty close, right? And I'm giving you that one meter is approximately three feet. That's obviously not true, but it's pretty close. And finally, one kilometer is approximately 0 0.6 miles. 
So we're going to use these, even though they're not exactly right, because they still allow us to practice. And we're going to convert 20.0 feet. And we're going to convert to meters, because the problem just says convert to SI units. So we're going to convert to meters. So how do we go from meters, uh, from feet to meters using this? Well, we have to paint, we have to make a path through here. So we can go from feet, where do we have feet here? We have feet, we can go to meters. Uh, and that's just direct, it's direct. So we already have feet and meters right there, so we don't even have to do a multi-step situation. One meter, three feet. One meter on the top, three feet on the bottom. Now we know this is not exact, but we arrange it this way because feet cancel with feet. If we flip it over, we don't get any cancellation. So in order to solve this, what we do, 20 times one divided by three. So just 20 divided by three, and we get 6.67 meters. Now this is approximate, so I'm not even gonna put the equal sign. I'm gonna say approximately equal to this because these conversion factors are just, they're not quite right. All right, the next one we're gonna do is 60 miles. And we're gonna convert that also into meters, but again, using only what we have here. So miles, we can go to kilometers, um, and kilometer, notice kilometers is not up here, kilometers to meters, but we know exactly uh, an exact conversion from kilometers to meters. So when I say in the problem statement, use only these approximates, of course, if you know an exact conversion factor because it's exactly in the metric system, you're always allowed to use it. So let's go from miles to kilometers. We can say that 0 0.6 miles is equal to one kilometer. Now, why is, why is this okay? Well, why do we do it this way instead of flipping it over? Because miles cancel with miles and I'm left with kilometers. But I don't want kilometers, I wanna go to meters. And I know that one kilometer, I know this from memory or I can look in the, in the metric system lessons, is 1,000 meters. That's an exact conversion factor, so you're always allowed to use it. Kilometers cancel, and that's why I arrange it that way. So when you take 60 and divide by 0 0.6, multiply by 1,000, you ignore the ones because they don't do anything when you multiply or divide. So 60 divided by this times 1,000, you get, uh, I should say approximate, I'll put approximately equal to 1.00 times 10 to the power of five meters. And this is the answer there, 1.00 times 10 to the five meters. All right, part C, which is the last part, we're gonna convert 8.0 inches and we're gonna convert that again to meters using these conversion factors, so these approximates. So we have inches to centimeters, and then once we get to centimeters, oh, uh, that's not gonna to help me too, uh, too much. I can go from inches to centimeters, and centimeters, how do I go to meters? Well, I know exactly the conversion factor from centimeters directly into meters, which is where we're trying to go, because that's an exact conversion factor. So let's use this, inches to centimeters. One centimeter, one half inch, one centimeter, Put a one half down here, inches. Or you could put 0 0.5 if you want to. Why do I arrange it that way? Well, because inches cancel on the top and bottom and I'm left with centimeters. I'm trying to go to meters, there's nothing else up here, but I know that 100 of these centimeters is exactly equal to one meter. Why do I write it down like that? Because centimeters on the top, centimeters on the bottom, and that is the, you know, gonna leave me with meters. So take 8.0, divide by a half or just divide by 0.5 and then divide again by 100 and you're going to get 0 0.16 meters and the only unit left is meters so that's my unit the only unit left of meters here so that's my unit the only unit left here is meters which that is my unit so this whole process of writing down what you're given uh, and arranging conversion factors you're allowed to flip them over because they're essentially fractions they're equivalencies you can flip them over and you arrange them in such a way to cancel the units you don't want and to leave behind the units that you do want. Now, right now, we're just doing it with units of length. In the next lessons, we'll do volume and area. I'll show you how to handle that. We'll do time, we'll do mass. But I'm, I'm also hinting at you that as we get into more complex units, um, you know, like the unit of the Newton, where we have, or the unit of density, where it's like kilograms per cubic meter, where it's a very complex unit, you can, you can manipulate them using this way easier than trying to decide what to do, like should I multiply, should I divide? They allow you to solve much more complicated units because when we get into more advanced math and more advanced physics, the problems, they're going to be using compound units which are more complicated than meters. And by arranging it like this, you can solve some pretty advanced problems just by handling the unit conversions correctly. So this thing is not something to flush, it's not something to forget, it's not something to disregard, 
Live it, breathe it, do it this way, please. And then follow me on once you have solved these to the next lesson, we'll conquer area and volume unit conversions.